Hello again, everybody. Uh, today, question is why are my why aren't my door locks working? Why aren't my exterior lights working? And just my warning lights, everything is going crazy. Can it be the battery? That's the question. So when you come to the pages of the schematics, you come to a certain module that's in charge of all these accessories. It's like a, called a BCM, a body control module. Honda gives it a different name. As you'll see here on the bottom, I'm trying something different with uh, a tripod. Let's see if this works better so I can point out. You see this? This is called MICU. A, a name that Honda gives it, but it's called the, it's like the BCM, which is the body control module. The other models call them. Purpose is the same, just a different name. So when we come to all these things, we, come, we look through the pages and we ask ourselves, can it be the battery? Well, if the battery would be bad, then the car wouldn't be cranking in the first place, correct? The alternator is working, the starter worked. We got, we got to this point, right, that the car is working, even though we have problems with the exterior lights, with the warning lights, that's a different issue. If we wanna know if the battery is bad, maybe we should go to the channel of Joe Electronic Schematics and how to test the battery, right? How's that for a promo? So, now we come to here, and as you can see, exterior light system as you can see over here it comes to warning systems door lock systems interior light system you see all these pins these are the pins the terminals so therefore when we spoke about it yesterday see these pins one through 24 one column then there's another one as you can see over here one through 30 another one then there's another one, Q through 14 pins. So three about, about three different columns, rows of pins. And as you see over here, exterior light system, sound system, door lock system. So all of this must be the problem that I'm having. Because when you look at the schematics, you narrow it down to where, where what's the common cause. And this looks like this is the common cause because this has to do with all my problems. So even if you don't understand anything about schematics, remember I said to you yesterday, follow these lines, don't follow these lines, because these are abbreviations that the, that the model uh, manufacturer uh, uh, uses for the vehicles, and it's hard to, under even for me, it's hard to understand it. I just go right to this, okay? This is the system, and this is what I'm interested in. So I just jump right to this, and I say, okay, Having problems with this one, that's a check. Having problems with this one, that's a check. Computer data lines, obviously, I don't know. Because I'm not deal I don't deal with things like that. I just know I turn on my car, I'm having all these problems. Shift interlock system, that has to do with when, you, when you're in park. You know, sometimes you have to put your foot on the brake to shift out of park. Well, that's the shift interlock system. Interior lights, yeah, my lights are going on crazy. My door locks, yeah, I had problems with my door lock. Exterior, yes, I had problems with my exterior. What's the common common fault here? It looks like it's coming from this from this module. Right? So let's analyze a little a little better. And this is a little easier for me because I can point, so it's a little easier with this tripod. But anyway. Let's notice a couple of things with these things, like I said. First of all, the fuses. Hopefully you can see the fuse. Yeah. Okay, now. When it comes to the fuses, when it comes to the fuses, you'll notice one thing I always point out. Look at the ratings. 10 amps, 10 amps, 7.5 and 7.5. Very low ratings. Compared to, remember the blower motor, which is the fan motor that you put on? That's about 30 amps. That's a high rating. Why? What's the difference? Usually modules and chips and transistors use lower rated uh, fuses. So you'll find 7.5, 10 amps, very low rated fuses. But let's look at it a little more. Let's analyze it. As you can see over here, this is not used, this line. So forget about pin five. So this is used. Let's go to ACC. This is pin nine, coming out of pin nine to a fuse number 32 let's pay attention hot in accessories or on 
That means when you have the ignition key in accessories or on the on position, some, some call it the run position, same thing. And it gives me 10 amps, current flows from the battery, comes out the other side and it flows through this wire. Notice what, we, what they forgot, the color of the wires. They forgot to put the color of the wires. That's a big mistake, right? How are you gonna follow all these wires? So let's blame that on Mitchell. So anyway, now we come over here and we say, okay, so this is a, the first thing is we have to see that it gets B plus, 12 volts. That's the most important thing. If I don't have 12 volts coming into here, this will not work. Any module will not work. I don't care if it's for the engine, or whatever it is. For the air conditioner, it has to have 12 volts. That's my first place that I go, okay? If I would troubleshooting this. So we have one fuse going in here and here. What about this one over here? Fuse number three, again, a 10 amp fuse coming into pin 19 over here. Pin 19 over here, right here, called uh, day, day, whatever, uh, I don't even know, LT, don't even know what it stands for. Anyway, daylights, probably daylights or something, daylight, I guess. See how hard it is to figure all these things on the abbreviation? So anyway, all I know is it needs, ten, it needs 12 volts coming into pin. 19 from here from pin from fuse number three so so far we have one we have two we have two fuses already okay what about this one over here what about this one over here look at this one another one another 12 volts going into pin i think there's ignition pin 22 wow what about this one over here this one pin 7 7.5 Another one going into pin 23. So four 12 volt lines, why? Well, the reason is because this is, you see it as one big unit module. However, there are many circuitries in these modules. There could be chips, could be transistors, could be smaller modules within a module. So we have to give 12 volts to all these circuitries inside of it. And that's why when you check something, just don't check one, 12 volt line let's say pin five check all of them nine check all because you don't know which one is responsible for the exterior lights for the warning system for the for the uh, for the door lock you don't know which one it is you check all of them make sure all of these four lines have 12 volts going into it okay that's the most important thing then obviously you always go for a ground make sure you have a ground because if the, the ground is knocked out then all of these things wouldn't be working correct because it's probably a common ground so which is not even listed here so if the ground is not good meaning i have corrosion there or something the door locks wouldn't work interior lights wouldn't work shift interlock system i would have problems with everything connected to it so even though you don't understand how the schematic works how anything you just go to the page look at these things that have to do with your problem i don't have a problem issue with the engine turning off right so i'm not going to go to the page that has to do with the engine engine performance i don't have a problem with the alternator right otherwise it would have shut off i don't have a problem with the starter motor i don't have a problem with the with the air conditioning in that uh, uh, uh thing so my problems are, like I just listed, door locks, exterior lights, and warning lights. All these things are going crazy for me today. I went to work, put on the car, and nothing worked. All the accessories. The word is, this module is in charge of your accessories. So whenever you have a problem with accessories, these are called accessories, then you go to the body control module or you go to MICU, whatever Honda calls it, whatever that is, okay? Maybe needs a reprogram, fine. So you go under the dashboard, wherever it's located. Here's the ground. Oh, as a matter of fact, here's the ground. G401, behind left kick panel. So if this ground coming from P14 would be bad, guess what? It would knock out everything. It looks like this is a common ground. So we would have problems with everything. So as you can see, look at all these lines. These are computer lines. These CAN means, these are the, the, the serial data, the CAN line. 
So uh, this is courtesy uh, Daylights probably um, uh, What's this If you're not ever sure what it's going for Go for interior light So let's say these abbreviations I'm not sure right? 14, 15, 16, 17 I'm not sure what they stand for I follow the lines I guess where it takes me it Takes me to interior lights and door And that's what it has to do with So again If I'm not sure of this one 12 A check that's what it stands for if i'm not sure what this stands for interior lights probably right and there it is interior lights the interior lights you follow the the path you follow you follow 10 you come down you come down and it stands for interior lights so if ever you run to see ignition key switch shift into like remember i was telling you you have to be in park the gear shift has to be in park and it has to be the your, in order to move the gear shift out of park your foot has to be on the brake and that has to do with ignition key switch correct and that's why so oh and over here how funny it is that we don't have the colors here but look over here we have the colors red with a white stripe light blue green over here we have the colors so if you're not sure come down oh. here and here's another one. Here's another uh, a ground. So there's a couple of grounds over here. Where is it located? Uh, G601. Maybe it was the same one. But And then come down here. Exterior light. See? Turn signal. Turn right. Exterior light system. So what's in charge of these things? I have a problem with my signal light. Both of them, right? When I do the left, the right one comes on. When I do the right, the left one comes on. What's the problem? You have to look at this body control module or MICU. Maybe it has to be reprogrammed. Maybe it's not good at all. So therefore, just because you have a problem with the lights doesn't mean it's the actual light bulbs itself. No. They're coming on anyway. The lights are coming on, but they're coming on when I press other things. That means you probably have to reprogram it. You take the module out, whatever. Obviously, you're not going to reprogram it yourself but you have someone do it for you or you bring in the car so hazard switch right hazard switches over here exterior light system that has to do with exterior lights it's not the inner lights correct the inner lights are your your lights in your car the exterior lights are the parking lights the, he the headlamps uh, uh turn signals that has to do with exterior lights so as you can see over here stop switch over here on pin 20, uh, 21, on pin 24, these two have to do with the has with the exterior lights. Um, let's go down. Key off timer. You off usually sometimes. Over here, P, uh, pin three. Let's call it pin three. Key off timer. That's when when you turn off your car. And sometimes the lights are still on, and it's programmed or. There's a, special, there's a delay until it goes off. That's the best way to describe it. There's a delay that it goes off uh, right here. Uh, and you can change that time that you want it to go off on some modules. So let's say you turn off the key. You go out of the car, right? You look at the lights. You say, oh, my God, the lights are not going off. After 10 seconds, you wait, and it goes off. Well, that's what this is, Okay. Now, these are just computer data lines for these things. So, as you can see, there's a lot of them. There's one exterior light here on this one, right, for the backlight. Then there's another one, exterior light system over here for park and reverse, whatever that is. Maybe automatic transmission, park to reverse. Exterior light system, probably because when you go into reverse, the lights go on in the back. So, this has to do with the reverse lights. Um, see, yeah, I, I, I figure it out as I look at these things what this has to do with. Obviously, the sound systems, sound systems as Q6, has to do with radio switch, so it has to do with that. The door locks over here, this probably has to do with the passenger, this probably has to do with the passenger, this probably has to do with uh, uh, um, or the, or the driver's side. So that's what that has probably to do with door locks or in the rear could be the rear or the rear doors in the back also. So you have to figure these things out 
from these systems that it gives you information. Like I said, the abbreviation is, is difficult to figure out. But anyway, so please go to my uh, channel, Joe Electronic Schematics. I think this is a little easier for me because I, with the tripod, I can, I can point out all these, these things with one hand and move them out with the other one much easier. Um, hopefully, it's raining today, so I can't do anything outside. I like to do things outside. So um, please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. Um, that means we'll be inside today. We'll be doing schematics. Hopefully, when the weather is nice, we'll go outside. And please go to my uh, channel about... Um, the battery tester to, to point out a few things about using a battery low tester your car has to be first charged okay that meaning you bring a charger to it or you can let the alternator just drive the car for 20 or 30 minutes then you're at full charge or close to it then you could do the low test so the question is why do i have to do a low test if the car was working obviously the battery is good right not necessarily. Maybe it was a slow crank until you got it, and then the car turned on, and then the alternate took over, and we, we replenished the battery. Fine. Okay. Still, there's something might be wrong with the battery. Could be corrosion on the terminals. I, you can see that video that I did. Always a possibility you lose voltage through resistance of corrosion on the terminals. Remember that. Not all the time the battery. But anyway, um, so... You had a slow crank, you got it cranked, you started the car, but it was a little difficult this morning, all right, going to work. Therefore, once it's charged, 12.6, 12.5, meaning by the alternator you've been driven, right, because I know people don't have chargers, right, to charge it. So, you go, and then you do the low test. If your battery was low, let's say I couldn't get it started, and I go and I measure it's 10 and a half volts, you're not going to do a low test because it's too low to do it in the first place there's no point to it right it's only done when first you charge up the battery to 12 uh 6 12 point whatever 12.5 12.4 whatever you could get it to understand now remember once you put the alternator on you have a surface charge so you have to put the lights on for a while and let it drop to about 12.3 12.4 until you get the true charge of it i hope this was helpful and please yesterday i had a um actually a good video more views than before. I don't know what happened. I have no idea. Maybe it was a full moon outside. But anyway, um, so I need about 780 more hours to reach my goal. And I think this is a little better because it's easier for me to instruct you like this uh, using this uh, tripod, hopefully. But anyway, go to my video about how to use a battery load test. And remember, only when it's charged if it's if the bat no take the battery out of the car there's no if you if you take the battery out of the car might as well replace it with the new one already this what's the point of that then okay and remember sometimes it's better to take out the terminals to do it open load they call it and sometimes you can leave it in it really doesn't make a difference i found but once it goes it should stay in the green area and it should stay there if it goes in the yellow area it's the weak area so Keep that in mind. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.